Hey everyone, it's Ivan, kbadger.com, out here today talking about kind of working through that mental logic with respect to the application of violence. What am I talking about? Well, let's go ahead and set the stage. Last night, I was out at dinner with my boys. We were tired, it was late, I didn't want to cook. It was going to be this fun outing that uh, yeah, we were going to get to go out and have dinner together, which honestly we don't often do. So we ended up going out to this restaurant, which happened to also have like a bar in it, TVs, things along those lines. And we happened to be seated kind of next to a bar. So we get there. I end up going to wash my hands, go to the restroom. When I come back, I see my boys and like something's a little bit off and I'm like, what's going on guys? And they're like, ah. And so Jada, my oldest, well actually I guess it was Ira, my youngest that ended up telling me. It was like, yeah, like this happened. And I'm like, really? I'm like, what happened, Jada? And Jada said, well, I was looking over there. I was kind of watching TV. And then I looked down and I saw one of those guys right over there and he was looking at me. And so I waved at him and then he flipped me off. And I was like, okay, keep in mind, Jada is 11 years old. His younger brother is nine. They're sitting at a table by themselves. These guys are probably, I don't know, about five yards away or so at the bar. Keep in mind also, Jada is probably one of the nicest humans you'll ever meet. Like walking down the street, someone will be on the other side of the street, going the other way, and he's just like, hey, how you doing? It's just that guy. Like we'll stop somewhere in line at like checkout and it's like, hi, how's your day going? genuinely concerned starts up conversations anywhere so he explains to me that this adult sitting with another adult two men he ended up waving at them or at the guy who was making eye contact and the guy flipped him off so where do you go from there obviously as a parent or just a good human being not okay with that behavior at all and couple things at play like yes my kids honestly objectively they're amazing kids it doesn't mean they can't be a little shit sometimes but I'm like that probably was not this no so what do you want out of that well part of you wants to be able to go confront that because honestly if we look around there's probably a lot of injustice in the world and you see these little infractions and you're like in the words of the dude, this aggression will not stand, man. But as a rational adult, being able to think through things, it's often beneficial for all parties. So what are some outcomes? What would I like? Well, obviously I probably would have gone. I say would have, because obviously I didn't. But best case scenario, in my mind, I would have confronted this person and been like, hey, like, what's going on? Was there some sort of issue? And if there was actually a behavior issue on my son's part, I would address that. And if there wasn't, I don't know, best case scenario, I would probably get an apology out of this guy. Him and his buddy already probably most of a pitcher down in their pitcher of beer. Would I have got that apology after this guy just flipped off an 11 year old kid? Probably not. And what would have that apology have done? Maybe soothe my ego, maybe feel feel a little bit good, maybe there's a little less injustice in the world, maybe, but where could that and would have that probably led, if we're being real about it. So we have someone that is already pretty confrontational, and here I am going to potentially confront them with some really poor behavior. Probably going to go to blows pretty quick, right? Probably not going to be like, you know what, my bad, that was incredibly rude of me. Like, let me go apologize to your son. So now we go to blows. How is that gonna work out? Well, there was him, his fat buddy sitting next to him. Honestly, probably feel pretty confident, or I do feel pretty confident in my abilities. Like, okay, but fight's a fight, you get what you get. So yeah, deal with one problem, keep it in between the other problem, and deal with one, then deal with the other one. 
but who knows what you're going to get. And at the end of the day, things can change very quickly. Maybe the dude's a ninja. Well, if it comes to like legitimate fighting, I'm not going to lose. So what does that turn into? Well, now I have to cut this dude off of me or multiple people off of me. It gets even worse than that. So here I am in the middle of a restaurant. I need to burn this dude down or both of them. Is that the best option? If there's any confusion, I will answer for you. No, that is not the best option. A little bit later, they ended up getting basically seated. They went over to another part of the restaurant. We continued with our meal. We eventually left and we got home. And once we got home and it was quiet, ended up talking through everything with my boys and said, hey, explain to me again what happened. And then I went on to explain to them because it was very important that they understood what I was trying to explain to them, which was what? How and why we use violence. Because yes, I could have solved that with violence right there. And I say with violence, like first choice, no. Would have it gone there? Probably. Again, some dude like already most of the way through his pitcher of beer, flipping off an 11 year old kid. Like probably not the best track record for decision-making skills, that dude's life. So probably would have gone to violence. And if that's what happens, then that's what happens. I'm not gonna lose. So again, that continuum of violence just gets ramped up depending on how that whole altercation goes. So great. Now I ended up cutting up someone or shooting someone up or just beating someone up in a restaurant because he flipped my son off. And now we don't get to eat dinner there. Best case scenario, worst case scenario, I go eat dinner in jail. Someone has to come pick up my kids. Like that's real. And then on top of that court dates on and on and on civil suit, who knows what again, because someone flipped off my son. That behavior, horrible behavior, should not be condoned. I don't condone it. But what we ended up talking about with my boys, I was like, what, basically, what could have that done to you, like that behavior? And it's like, oh, like, hurts your feelings. Yeah, definitely hurts your feelings. Your feelings are not something protected. And I think, honestly, both sides of the dichotomy, because unfortunately we have a dichotomy, whether it's false or not, forget that feelings are not protected. Should that behavior be addressed? Yes. And you know what? Chances are that person's already paid penance for that and will continuing into the future. Because people that do that stuff usually do not live very fulfilling lives. And usually they have lots of run-in with law enforcement and everything else that makes for an unpleasant time. So should I have been like the vindicator right there of that little transgression right there? No, I don't think so. And what was important to me to explain to my boys is, were you in danger? No, you weren't. At any point, or for that matter, if I came back and sat down and that behavior contended or continued and there were insults being thrown, okay, I'm like, let's go somewhere else, boys. Like, not a huge deal. Like, we can leave. But what is the difference there? And this is what was very important that I explained to my boys, which was important for me to explain to them, is I was like, were you guys in danger? And I was like, no, we weren't in danger. And I'm like, okay, like, that's the distinction. Because if you were in danger, this would have gone completely differently. Like, yes. All this stops out, violence. Escalating to whatever level it needs to. If you guys, or myself for that matter, were in danger. But it wasn't. And I bring this up really to illustrate how something small, you'll see it with road rage, you'll see it with all kinds of little things. And at the end of the day, you don't know who's sitting on that bar stool. You don't know who's sitting behind the wheel over here. Who knows what kind of past they've had, what kind of life they've had, what kind of last like 30 minute phone call with their spouse that was cheating on them and now they're separated, getting divorced. Like, whatever it is to push people to a place where they otherwise would not behave the same way they would otherwise. And maybe that's where that guy was. But me confronting him over that and that escalating to violence, even if I won, still lose. Like, cool, my boys just saw me crush some dude in a bar because he flipped them off. That's not what I want to 
project to my boys, like, were you guys in danger? No. Okay, then like, why'd I use violence there? Because I went and confronted him and then it escalated verbally until he finally pushed me and then I dropped this. Like, no, why? For what, man? No. And I'm sure there's some people that are like, well, I would have punched that. Okay, maybe. You're probably the same guy that didn't go in the military because I would have knocked that drill instructor out if you got in my face. No, you wouldn't have. Sorry, you wouldn't have. And I know, everyone has different lines. Maybe your line is different. But I encourage you to think through what happens with the application of violence. A lot of people are really quick to be like, oh, yeah, if something bad happens, like, I'm carrying concealed. Like, yeah, I was too. Like, okay. Like, that's not the solution for every problem you come across. And if you make problems to the level where that becomes the solution, that could have easily been avoided, even if you win, that's still a loss, man. Still losing. So, I don't know if this will resonate with some of you. Hopefully it will. And yeah, I don't know. Another day in the life, man. But as always, thanks for joining us at kidbadger.com. Look forward to seeing you next time. One